Hey, and welcome back to another twin motion video. In this video, we'll be learning about how we can replace objects in twin motion. There's actually a tool that will help us easily replace specific objects that we want throughout our scene with twin motion objects, which is really nice. Before we jump into it, if at any point in this video you happen to learn something, please like the video. It helps me out a lot. Also, consider subscribing. That also helps me out a lot. I know a lot of you have not done that. So jumping right into it now, we are going to be replacing objects into a motion. Of course, that sounds so simple, but what we're actually doing is taking our imported model and be it Revit, SketchUp, Rhino, Archicad, whatever it might be, wherever it came from, you can replace those objects with twin motion objects really quickly. And there's a, a specific tool to do that. And you know, why would you want to do this? Well, the idea is that you can take really any object, but let's say we have these really basic looking chairs. We just have this real basic looking chair and we want to replace this chair with a nicer looking chair. Again, this is out of Revit. There's no material. There's nothing special to it. But we know that Twin Motion has nice looking chairs, so let's replace this chair with something else. That's the reason you might want to replace these objects in mass, for example. So the idea is I have this directly linked model from Revit, and now I'm in Twin Motion. I want to start to replace these objects, so I don't have to. I don't have to take go to the trouble of putting all of the nice looking materials and everything, and having the models look a specific way in Revit. I could just do my modeling really quickly and then port that over to a motion and replace them really quickly. So let's do this. So I've got this object selected. And before I actually go into really replacing an object, I do want to say that it has everything to do with how you're importing your model. Now, if, you, if you've if you seen previous videos of mine, I have done one on importing models, whether it be a direct link or an FBX. You please watch that and please understand the dynamics of how you should be exporting your FBX and then how you should be importing them into Twinmotion so that we have the options that we have here. And what we're looking at is the fact that we have no merging going on. We have every element as its own individual element. Each one of these is an object in Revit that we have the ability to manipulate and then in this case, replace in Twinmotion. So with this selected, you can see that here it is selected also at the right. There's my data, there's that particular model. I can simply right click it and you won't find the replace tool like as an actual tool, but you'll see it in your right click options over here at the right, you'll see replace object. And as soon as I do that, you can simply drag whatever object that you want to replace, in this case, the chair with right there. So let's go to objects and we'll just keep this simple right now. And we'll go to chairs and let's just, you know, how about this chair? We'll drop this chair in and then we'll simply hit start replace and it, it should replace it for us. Now, before I do that, I do want to jump in here and say this transform option. I can't say that I'm aware of what it does. I have looked up the documentation for twin motion. I've looked up videos put out by twin motion that covers the replace tool. I have seen many different tutorials on older options of replacing objects into a motion in previous versions even, and no one covers this option. It's, it's simply glossed over. They just gloss right over it. It's not covered. And I can't say that I know what it does. Now I will say, if you do know, leave those in the comment section below, because I'm very curious and I want to be open about the fact that I'm not jumping over this. I'm not discluding this in the tutorial and I'd like to know what it does. And I'm willing to admit that I don't know what it does. And I can't seem to find it. So if you do know, please let me know. And if it's in a video, please direct me to that video because I'd like to see it. So I'm going to ignore this like everyone else, but at least I acknowledge that I'm ignoring it first. So I'm going to leave that on, not a big deal. And I'll click start replacement. And you'll notice as I click this, nothing happens. And again, this is a great opportunity to jump in and say, the reason nothing is happening is because I have used the direct link with Revit. And using the direct link with Revit will not allow me to replace objects. Now, I cannot explain why that's the case. It just simply isn't the case right now. I can't do it. There's no way that we can replace objects with a direct link from Revit. I wish that were, were not the case because that's how we'd want to do it ideally. So we have to go to Revit, and that's not a big deal. But I've got the model here, and I'm simply going to export this. Make sure that there's no merging here. That's very important. We want to keep the same hierarchy that we have. I'm going to simply overwrite this FBX that I have in there. This is going to export. 
and then I will go back into twin motion. And actually what I'm going to do is just simply hide this entire model just like this. We can hide the model there. We can hide the model there. And I'm going to now go to import, open the file, and then there's my file. And I'll, in the options, again, make sure this is keep hierarchy. We want, just like we said, no merge in Revit, we wanna make sure we keep the hierarchy here, which basically says we didn't merge in Revit and we wanna keep it not merged in Twinmotion. I don't wanna collapse it by material or collapse it as one single object. I always like to fix UVs and textures. I'll click OK. I don't care about the textures. That's fine. It'll bring it in. OK, so here we are. Just for your sake, I will quickly replace a couple of these materials so it looks like an actual scene. So here we go. Change the floor back to this polished concrete. And then let's go outside and we will replace this ground there and then finally some water for the lake there we go that looks good it's so coming back in here we can see all right now we have this object and if i click the object i can expand this here and see there's my object let's go ahead and right click this replace the object let's go back to that chair we can drag it in here and then simply replace object. And there we go, it's that simple. It replaces that selected object with that chair. Easy enough. And now really all, you know, all I need to do now is just rotate this 90 degrees. I mean, that's good enough, that's what you want. And so at this point, may, let's take this a step further. I, maybe I want to replace all of these objects. One object there, maybe this lamp. You can hold control, select all these objects. And regardless of where they are over here at the right, I can just right click and replace. And at this point, now I can replace objects here. And now, you know, let's go up here and we'll go back and maybe we want to, you know, replace these objects with just, just some random objects right now. We can, we're actually able to pull in multiple objects here to replace these objects with. Now I have selected in this case, I think six objects and I have three that I want to replace them with. What it's going to do at this point is replace the six selected objects with the three here, but in just like a random order, like in a random place. And it's kind of nice if you want to randomly replace a, a particular kind of chair with multiple kinds of chairs. That's really the idea here. So I can click start replace. And as soon as I do that, I have a, a randomization of these different objects, these three different objects dispersed between the six objects here. And I can actually hit start replace again and get a, an updated randomization. I can also continue to add objects here and add multiple objects and to the point where I can get new random objects wherever I want. And it's just real quickly done. It's really easy. So that's a reason why you might want to also replace an object. You can just randomize all the twin motion objects while replacing the generic object you have in your scene. So I'm gonna get back to just my basics here. And now I wanna take this again a step further. We, we just saw that we can replace these objects in twin motion, very simple. But let's, let's go back to Revit. And what I'm gonna do at this point really is say, maybe you want to add a bunch of cars. It, it, lots of examples of, of re the replacing objects in twin motion have been to add cars. We have cars in twin motion, they look really nice but I've got this road here and maybe I just want to take a random component like this chair and place it just, you know, randomly out here on the road to the point where I have a bunch of chairs on the road that I can then use to replace and create, you know, have my, all of my cars in twin motion. And I did that all from this chair. And so the idea with the replace object tool within twin motion is it doesn't care what the object is. So I could place a bunch of cubes that I've made as, you know, maybe a replacement family that I've made in Revit and just dump them all in my model really quickly, knowing that I'm going to replace that into a motion with something really nice. It saves your time modeling because it's like, who cares if you put in a chair, if you don't need a chair in Revit, you just need it into a motion. You just drop in a square easy enough. So 
Once these chairs are placed, I can then re-export my model as an FBX and then import it again and replace all my chairs with cars. And so let's go ahead and do that. So now let's export this. Again, make sure you have no merge. I'll save over this file. Once this is done, we'll go back into Twinmotion and reload it. So there we go, it's done. Let's go back into Twinmotion, go back to my import here and reload this model. Again, so the funny thing is this chair is gonna stay and because I'm reloading my model, it's just kind of the way it is. You know, this chair is gonna come back, but you know, the nice thing is because I re-imported it and I have every object on their own, I'm able to just simply hide that object or I can, you know, I can delete it if I don't need it because I have that chair that I've replaced it with. And the nice thing is also if those things happen to move, let's say we moved this chair, I can simply just replace it again. It's very simple and the idea is that it is simple. So my hope is with the dynamic link that we could actually be able to take these replaced objects and it would read as the same object coming from Revit, be it the direct link instead of this imported FBX, and that we wouldn't have to re-replace these objects. That's just a hope of mine. I can't say that's necessarily gonna be the case, but nonetheless, I hope. So coming out here to the site, we can see here are our chairs, you know, and you know, they're spread about the road. It's not a big deal, but you know, let's go ahead and select them all. Now I can see them all here. So I can easily select all of these right here, right click and replace. And just like we saw before, I can quickly drag any object that I want in here. In this case, it's going to be cars. And just also like we covered, I can select multiple cars at once and have this randomly replaced throughout all the chairs. And, you know, of course, we have a bunch of different cars and colors and chairs. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll start replace and we can see there we go. We have all of these cars replaced by all the chairs. Like It's very simple. And it just happened to work out to where I don't have to rotate some of these cars. I can rotate some of them for one direction versus the other. But remember that all the objects you're replaced or replacing with are pulling from that origin point of the model you're replacing. So in this case, the chair, the origin point of the chair is going to be replaced by the car's origin point as well. And that has to do with rotation. I can go in and rotate the chairs and I'd get a rotation of the car I, because I didn't rotate any of the chairs. I didn't have any of the rotated cars. So that's a way to do it. You have to rotate it one way or the other. So in any family you make, you might put a, a front arrow or like a, a particular arrow in a direction that tells you that this is a direction versus another, something like that to give you an idea of what that might be. So we have looked at all of the ways that we can replace, but I want to cover one more. And this has to do with the new doors that came with Twinmotion 2020.2. Now here, I'm gonna click on my door and you know, there's my door. And again, I can right click this door and replace this object, but, and I want to replace it with some of the new doors within Twinmotion. So I've got my tools, of course in objects, I've got my doors and then I wanna replace it with the rotating door. And how about this one? I can drag and drop this here and I can just start replacement. Now this is something I've seen before and I don't know why this is the case, at least from Revit, all the doors are that are replaced just come in at 90 degrees, they're a default size and you just have to rotate them. You know, of course, it's not a big deal to select it 90 degrees and then change the size and have it fit. But without having to do any of that, I'm actually going to undo this completely. I'm going to replace this object once again with this door. And before I touch anything, I wanna just drag this door away from the this door opening and then I'll drag it back and I, before I drag it back I'll tell you why I'm doing this. So I'll click on the door, I will drag it away and as I start to drag it back you'll see a highlighted area over the door opening in a sense highlighting it and what this is going to do is it's going to actually snap the door to this location and you can also see that the door height and width has been adjusted to fit this hole in the wall where the door will go and you can see as I drag it away that that door becomes a default height and width once again. It's no longer responding to that door opening. So again, I can just quickly drag it back and then there's my door. It's gonna to snap to that location, it's perfect. So I'm gonna undo this all again and show you actually how quickly it is to replace this door. I'll replace the door, I'll drag this door in, replace the object, again, select the object, and then just snap it into place. That's it, you're done. It's very simple to replace that door. 
and it you know works all the same. And we could also do this with multiple doors. So let's say I have this door and I've got three of these types of doors throughout the project. I want to replace all these doors with probably the same generic looking doors, maybe just the, like the basic white door here at the top. I'll hit replace. And again, of course, they're all going to be turned 90 degrees, but look how easy it is to just simply move this door into place and snap it right there. It's very simple. Click the door, snap it into place, done. Like it, it, that's it. There's nothing else to do. And the door functions and works well. Very simple. So that's going to do it for the replace object tool within twin motion. It, it's very simple. There's not a whole lot to it, but I hope this video gave you an idea of how you can use it in different ways and different creative ways and ways that would help improve the speed and functionality of getting objects looking good in twin motion. So if you happen to learn something and I hope you did, please demolish that like button. It tells me that you learned something. Also consider subscribing. It really helps me out a lot. And I thank you all who have. That's going to do it for this video. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next one.